Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I'm going to be using epoxy resin and aquacast along with my new mushroom jar mould from Let's Resin to create a very sweet little mushroom lamp. I always love the challenge of thinking outside the box and using moulds in ways other than which they were intended. And so that's what I'll be doing today and let's see how it goes. I was recently sent this cute little mushroom jar mould from Let's Resin. Now there is a little bit of a story to it. <laughs> they asked me if I would like to have it and I'll be honest with you, I said no thank you because it just, I didn't think it was my cup of tea at all. I don't normally go for cute things, it's not my style really. I don't know why, it's a fantastic mould, it's just, I saw the pictures and I thought, hmm, it's not really the kind of thing I use. But anyway, <laughs> they accidentally sent me it anyway and I tell you what, I'm so pleased that they did and you will find out why because there's two reasons why I'm really pleased that they did. Anyway, let's get on with it. For the base of my lamp, which I've decided to make, I'm using Aquacast. You might have seen me use it in a few of my videos recently because I think it's really, really good. It's like Jesmonite or Hydroflow or um, Nature Resin, which I've also used. But there is a difference. It's water activated, so you don't need the... Um, what's it called the acrylic binder liquid you don't need that you just add water because all the magical stuff is fused into the powder now then i filled my base with water before filming and weighed ha weighed it while i was filling it with water to see how what the volume was and then i used the aquacast calculator on the elichem website to find out the amount of powder I would need and the amount of water I would need. So that's what I'm doing now, just measuring out the water and the powder and giving it a good mix. By the way, do you like my new silicon mat table protector from Let's Resin? It's good, isn't it? It wipes down really nicely and it's just so good for protecting my table, so I'm glad I got that. Once it was mixed, I poured it in just a little bit at a time. And the thing I like about these kind of moulds is they're not solid. They have a cavity in the middle. And so you can get your fingers inside and kind of squeeze all the way around what would be the rim of the base. And that way you can get rid of any trapped air by giving it a good squeeze and a tap and a bang. It just really helps to be able to get your fingers in that cavity. So yeah, I do like these kind of moulds. Now, I only filled it partially with the white Aquacast, gave it a good bang about, added some more, but then I added some, I think it was terracotta, jesmonite colouring, because I just wanted the base of the mushroom to have that darker bit at the bottom, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. So as before, I just added it a little bit at a time, kept giving it a little bit of a bang and a tap and really took my time because with this Aquacast, you don't have to rush. It has a much longer um, working time than Jesmonite or Hydroflow or any of the other casting compounds. It's got a nice long working time so you can really take your time, get rid of all those bubbles. And when you've got a mould like this that has a curve towards the top, that that's where any bubbles will get trapped. So take a little bit of extra time along that top curved area. And if you like, you can poke something in there, you know, to smooth around the top of the inside of the mould and that will help as well. So after an hour, it was time to take it out of the mould. And this was my first time using the mould and you're about to find out why I suddenly became very, very pleased that Let's Resin had sent me this by mistake. <laughs> Thank you, Let's Resin. I love it. So here we have it. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? 
I bet you are. Isn't that a brilliant shape? I love the shape of it. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, yep, candles, candle vessels. (laughs) And since I recorded this and before even doing this voiceover now, I must have made, let me think, I've made four candles with that. I just love it. It's the perfect shape and size for candles. So yeah, that was one of the reasons why I was so happy that I ended up getting this mould. Right then, we've got the base. It's time to make the top. Now, because I wanted to make this into a little night light or a lamp, I decided to use resin for the top. And the resin I've chosen is iCrystal 5 from Resin Pro. It's got a maximum pouring depth of 5 centimeters, so it was perfect for the top of the mushroom. I've coloured it with, gosh, I'm going to, I can't even remember the name of it. It's a liquid pigment and I'm going to put it up on the screen because my mind has failed me at the moment. And it just worked out beautifully for the colour for the top of the mushroom, I thought. So, yeah, I poured that and simply left it to cure. I think it was two days later, it was ready. I peeled back the mould to reveal the top of the mushroom and I was really happy with how it turned out. I really love the clarity of the eye crystal resin. This actually reminds me, I don't know about you, but it reminds me of a boiled sweet, A red boiled sweet, (laughs) the way the light catches it. I just think it's great. And as you can see, it's got indentations around where the spots will be. So that will help me with the next step. So the bit you're going to see me do now, you don't need to do. I did it on one spot and then realised it I wasn't going to do it anymore. The idea was, because light was going to be shining through it, to colour the spot white with a Posca marker first before adding some UV resin. But yeah, I changed my mind and didn't do that anymore. And as it turned out, it didn't make any difference with the light shining through. (laughs) So yeah, I just thought I'd show that just so you realise why there's a white spot there for the next bit. So what I did do was I used UV resin, it's J. Diction's UV resin. I squeezed some into a little pot and then I added some of the seashell mica powder from Let's Resin. Oh, and I forgot to say the UV resin is J. Diction's new UV resin. It's a high viscosity one. I think it's currently only available in the USA, but... If you live there, I would highly recommend it because it's nice and thick. And for what I'm about to do, it really helps because it doesn't run everywhere. It keeps its shape where you put it. Just about anyway. It's a little bit, you've got to be a little bit careful. But it's a lot easier when you're using a thicker resin. So as you can see, I'm carefully placing the UV resin on with a coffee stirring stick. Just a little bit at a time. Don't overload it. The little rim that, you know, the indentation around the spot will help it stay into position, but it will overflow if you add too much. And trust me, I found that out the hard way. (laughs) So once you've filled it enough, you just put it underneath a UV lamp for two minutes and that's cured. Well, it's kind of cured. You're going to be doing this for each spot. So... Obviously, each spot is going to be going under there multiple times. So don't worry about, you know, doing it for a long, long time because it will get longer than the initial two minutes. It's just enough to, you know, make it stay in position. I repeated the process for all the spots and then it was time to move on to the next and last step. Right then, because this is going to be a lamp and I need lights on the inside of the base, I needed a hole in the side. And I was a little bit nervous because I've never drilled through Aquacast before and I didn't know what it would be like. So I put some masking tape on there just to kind of stop the drill from slipping, just to help it stay in position. And I just 
took a leap of faith and tried it. And you know what? It drilled really easily and I was very relieved. <laughs> right then, for the light inside, I decided to just use a string of LED fairy lights, the USB ones, so that, that they can be connected to the mains and you don't have to worry about batteries running out. I do prefer that. And so, yeah, make sure the hole is big enough if you're using a string of fairy lights. Mine was a little bit tight and I had a bit of a struggle, to be honest. But once I'd started threading the lights through, I didn't want to start taking them out again and making the hole bigger. I should have done really because I had a right job threading them all through. So, yeah, just do be careful about that if you're going to use the LED fairy lights. And it might not be the best option, to be honest. I tend to go for what I have in my house rather than buying things just for the project. If I've got something that I think will do the job, I use it and you're probably the same. Uh, yeah, it might work better if you've got some kind of um, light fitting with... Um, you know, a fitting for a proper light bulb, a small light bulb, of course, and an LED one. You don't want anything that gets hot when you're using resin. And LED bulbs don't really get hot, so that's fine. But yeah, use whatever option you want to use. I used fairy lights and they worked well. Once I'd finally pulled them all through that little hole, I coiled them all up around a miniature rolling pin just to keep them a bit tidier. You could just scrunch them all up really. They're very good these LED lights and they're very robust so if you wanted to you could scrunch them up and fit them in. But yeah, I just... <laughs> I don't know, some people would say I'm a perfectionist, I'm, I'm really not, but I like it to be neat, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, doing, this, doing it this way, you can get them in much more neatly. And as I switch the light on, you can see that the light kind of shines right through the spots, which is what I was trying to avoid. I kind of wanted to black them out a bit, which is why I tried using the white pen at the beginning. Um, it might have made a bit of a difference using that white pen, but it did still kind of shine through the spots because it was quite an intense light. But I really love the finished result. I couldn't quite capture its true beauty in a photograph, so I decided to take a video to give you a better look. But this is what happened. Hey, I was trying to get a picture of the mushroom. Are you gonna let me? Hey? Hmm? No, you know I yeah. Uh, you have to just be in the video. Hey? <laughs> you make yourself comfy. You make sure you're nice and comfy. Shall we see if you like the light? Ready? Do you think? Do you like the light? <laughs> Not really. Let's turn it off. Ah, something else has caught your attention. Sorry about the sound quality there. I think I had my finger over the microphone. But anyway, that was the guest appearance from Honey, the Cavapoo. <laughs> and yeah, I think you get a much better idea of how it actually looks in a video. Do you think? It's sometimes things just don't photograph well. Anyway, we've reached the end of the video and I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll leave all the links to the items I've used in the description and I will see you again next time. Thank you for watching and bye for now.